And welcome to another edition of the Centre Race UK podcast. Your host as usual, Ray Monaghan, here with you again. This week it's all about the build-up to the first competitive action of the season as the Nottingham Panthers get the season 2014-2015 underway in the brand new Champions Hockey League. The Panthers won't be the only British side taking part in European competition. The Belfast Giants will head over to Germany in October for the Continental Cup. As for right now though, you can see all the CHL matches live on the Premier Sports cameras. The first match is this coming Friday the 22nd at 6pm. Finnish team Local Ramo are the visitors to the NIC in Nottingham. For further information, just check out the Premier Sports link to the CHL page on the Centerize UK website. Luko come off the back of a 30-23-7 regular season record, good enough for third place in the Finnish Liga. In the post-season, Luko came out as the bronze medal winners. The club play in the Kivy Kalen Arena, which takes approximately 5,400 spectators. Players of note to have turned out for the club you may be aware of include two NHLers, the first being netminder Dwayne Rawson, who helped backstop the Edmonton Oilers to the Stanley Cup final back in 2006. He played in 34 games for Luko 10 years ago in that lockout lost season of 2004-2005. American defenseman Hal Gill also played for the team in that same season and took part in 31 matches. The roster is presently comprised of three netminders, 8D and 15 forwards. A few will of course be cut from the match date roster. There are presently two imports signed up, one American and one Canadian, with the rest Finnish natives. Now for the first interview of the podcast, to learn more about Nottingham's first opponents, I speak to Luko Ralma netminder Ryan Sapolsky. Ryan, first off, welcome to the podcast for this week. I really appreciate you having you on speaking to me. Well, thanks for having me. I'll talk a little bit about yourself first. You've spent your whole career so far in North America, and last year you opted to take a different direction by coming to Luku in Finland. What convinced you initially that Europe would be the ideal move for you to make? Um, you know, it was just a great offer I got from from Luko. Uh, I, I heard a lot about the league, and I think especially the way they develop the goalies over here. It's uh, You see a lot of the, the top goalies in the NHL now being from Finland, and uh it was kind of a, a good opportunity for me to come over, and they gave me a chance to, to play a lot of games. So that was probably something I wouldn't find in the American League back home. So it was an opportunity for me to come play at a high level and in a great league and play a lot of games. That's That was really the, the selling point for me. Now, you've had that first se- uh, season in Finland under your belt now and getting ready for the second. What's been so good about your European experience this past year that's persuaded you to carry on in Finland? Um, I mean, I just got treated really well last year and being able to play a ton of games at a high level. Uh, and I think this organization, just the way they treat their imports especially, I think they it's top class for sure. So it was an easy decision to come back here and, and try to put together another good season. And there was a few fellow North Americans on the roster with you last season. Does that make the transition to a new country much easier and even enjoyable when you have a couple of guys who have maybe done it before and a couple who it's new to, like yourself last year? Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely a, a huge for me last year. There was a guy here that played here two seasons, uh, Matt Jenner. So coming over and kind of speaking to him during the summer before coming over it made it a little bit easier to come over. And, uh, and then we got two other imports during the season so that was also uh it was nice we all live in the same apartment building so we're always kind of hanging out and stuff and and that definitely makes it a little bit easier coming over to a to a new country and and experiencing new things now to anyone that's unfamiliar with Luko how would you describe say the club the area you stay the building you play out of and the fans yeah it's uh it's just a smaller city it's only about 40,000 people so it's uh, it's not much smaller than my town back home, so that was kind of a nice thing. I think if it was a big city, it kind of be hard to find my way around here. But everything we need is it's close to where we live, so it's it's a cool little city. Oh, the fans here, they're doing incredible. It's my first games here. Uh, we have this little tournament at the beginning of the season. It's called the the Pizza Tournament, and it's kind of my first welcoming to European hockey. And the fans are just chanting the whole game. It's so loud. It's, it's really incredible. It's Definitely a different atmosphere than, than what you see back home. So 
it was uh i mean they, they they're always behind us win or lose so it's it's kind of nice to see fans like that and the, the fans are just always into the game so it's it's a different experience here than back home but it, it's been awesome now, when I speak to out skaters who make the move from North America to Europe, they always tell me the bigger ice was one of the biggest changes for them. Is you as a goalie has much changed for you since switching to the bigger ice and the double IHF rules? Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, the big thing is you, you just have to move a lot more, uh, and the players are, are much faster because the ice is so much bigger. They have a lot more room to skate, so we're, I'm always I'm moving a lot more, and that was kind of something that I had to adjust to when I first got here. Working with a goalie coach, it, it took a little bit of time for me to get used to those movements, and and the angles are also different at first. Playing on the Olympic ice is it's a little bit different, so it's that, that was kind of the same thing for me. Just I mean, the speed and, and size of the ice and, and the movements are definitely different from North America. Now. And was it a bit easier for yourself as a goalie as well with the non-touch icing? Did you feel that helped you a little bit as well defensively? Yeah, that was. I mean, that was something that was different too, but. You get used to that pretty fast, but we went to the hybrid this year, so it's it's going to be an adjustment, I think, on this season to get used to that. Now, based on your experience from being with the team last season, what would you class the playing style of the team? Is it, you know, a speed and skill attacking team, for example? Yeah, I mean, I would say definitely speed and skill, but kind of a structured speed and skill game where we're defensive. I mean, that's kind of the way Finnish hockey is, I think. It's where we play smart and defensively, and uh, and we like to definitely get on the rush. I think that was something that we did really well last year, especially towards the end of the season. We were we were creating a lot of stuff off the rush and stuff, and, and that is definitely a, an attribute of our team. I think. Now, if your schedule this season being a little heavier with the Champions Hockey League participation, has the team been doing anything in particular in preparation for the CHL and the normal season ahead too? Uh, nothing. I mean, nothing too different from last year. But I think having meaningful games coming so soon in the training camp, it, it's a little, a little more excitement. I think in the room. Uh, last year we we had a month and a half of training camp before we started getting into regular season games. So I think having important games only three weeks in the training camps, it's it's been good. So, and I think uh, we go into a little bit more video preparation a little bit sooner than we would have last year. That might be the only, the only difference in, in getting into game structure stuff earlier. Now, you've had a number of playoff runs before in your career, and this season you have the CHL to take part in as well, offering a chance to play in a tournament, not only in a different format from usual, but also getting to travel on other countries. Are you excited by the prospect of getting to test yourself against the best other hockey nations have to offer? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely going to be the new... Uh, I've had, like you said, we've had we had a pretty good player from last year, but it's going to be a different experience. I think the format of this is different than what I've ever done before. So, getting over to see different teams and different styles of play in different countries is definitely going to be pretty cool. And your first match in the Champions Hockey League will be in the United Kingdom against the Nottingham Panthers next Friday. Have you been given an idea as of yet of what the team may expect to face from them? Uh, no, uh, we don't really. I think that's one of the challenges that's going to face us. We don't really know too much about the style of play. I think in the United Kingdom, it's and we don't know much about anything outside of Finland. We played some games in Switzerland last year, but going into uh, to play a different kind of style of game and, and see a different type of team is that's going to be a big challenge for us. But we're gonna, I mean, do everything we can. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot more preparation throughout the next week to to get prepared for Nottingham. And just a final couple of bits before letting you go. You turned out for Team USA last year to compete in the Deutschland Cup. What was the experience like to not only suit up in that uniform and get to play with your fellow countrymen, but win that tournament as well? Yeah, that was. I mean, that was a pretty incredible experience and, and something that I never really thought would happen in my career. Had a lot of ups and downs. I think in my first two years of throw back home playing on a different bunch of different teams. So. Getting an opportunity to, to represent your country is it's every hockey player's dream. So being able to do that and, and the guys they were awesome too and we kind of all bonded pretty well and being able to win that was, was definitely a big bonus. Well, Ryan, I want to thank you again so much for your time today and the best of luck to you for the season ahead. All right, thank you very much. My thanks to both Ryan and his club, Local Ramu, for making that interview possible.
After that first match on Friday, the Panthers have less than 48 hours to regroup for match day two, again at the NIC with the visitors' Swedish side Lulea. They come off a 22-21-12 regular season record last year for sixth place in the SHL and lost out in the first round of the postseason. Lulea do have plenty of title credentials, so don't write them off, not the least being their European trophy win in 2013, the now historical competition that the CHL has replaced. The club play in the 6,300 capacity Coupe Norborton Arena. Historical players of note include current LA King Justin Williams, who signed during the lockout loss season a decade ago, suiting up in 49 games. Lulea was also the first professional club for Swedish defenseman Matthias Oland. He turned out for three seasons before he was signed to the NHL by his drafting club, the Vancouver Canucks. The current roster presently has three goalies, 10 D and 15 forwards. Eight of the 28-man squad are non-Swedish nationals. Two of the club's imports are Canadian twin brothers Cam and Chris Abbott. Which takes us on rather nicely to our second interview this week. In order to learn more about the club, I spoke to their captain, Chris Abbott. The Canadian playmaker is now entering his sixth season with the Swedish club. And I started by asking him what it is about the club that's made him stick around for so long. Uh, well, I think for, for both Cam and I, we both really enjoy living up in Lille and, and playing hockey up here. Um, it's a great city to, to, to play in and a great uh, community to, to live in and do things away from the rink. So um, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it. I think that... Uh, yeah, we feel quite a bit of loyalty to this team after giving us the opportunity to come up here and play. And and obviously, I'm the, the captain of the team now, and that's a big honor for me as well. So um, we just uh, we enjoy living up here and been playing uh, playing here, and um, it's it's been great for the last five years now. And how much would you say the European style of game compares to the traditional North American style? Was it a long or difficult transition for you? No, it wasn't a, a difficult transition. Um, I actually would say I prefer the the uh, European style compared to the North American style. Um, with the bigger ice surface, you have more emphasis on skating and and uh, playmaking and less on on uh, yeah physical physical play. So it was nice to to come over to Europe and and um, yeah experience hockey uh, that way. And um, I think it fits us pretty well. And we've uh, really enjoyed and there wasn't much of an adjustment I've mentioned a couple of times you've had a brother and looking at your careers are virtually identical in terms of the paths you've chosen was that a conscious decision from the both of you to travel together or did things just work out that way? Um, yeah we, we both uh, obviously have played together our whole lives and um, I see it as uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's a a great opportunity for us to be able to play on the same team and I think a lot of brothers and a lot of guys would, uh, yeah, would enjoy doing that as well and they're probably envious of it. I think it's uh, we wouldn't hesitate to, to play on opposite teams or in different leagues but we, we do enjoy playing together and, and living together outside of hockey and uh, we spend a great deal of time together and have the same interests so uh, it's always been fun having a, a best friend uh, playing with you and um, yeah, I look forward to continuing to play with them. With the two of you sticking together, did that make the transition of adapting to life in Europe much easier? I would say it did. I mean, you know, you have somebody to play with and somebody to experience the things away from the rink and, and have a little piece of home with you as well. So um, it did make it uh, easier. I know for some guys it can be difficult leaving family and friends back home, but for us, uh, yeah, it's yeah, much less because there's the two of us. Um, with you, the team now in pre-season mode, what have you guys been doing in preparation with sort of doubling up with the domestic calendar and the upcoming Champions Hockey League as well? Uh, yeah, well, since we've, since Cam and I have been back, uh, the team has gotten back together uh, the start of, the end of July rather, the start of August here, and um, we've really been um, going hard back on the ice and, and learning uh, new systems with our new coaches and a lot of a lot of new faces around the team this year we've uh, had a lot of personnel changes so just getting used to everybody um and their styles and uh yeah learning what the coaches expect and um it's it's been a good preseason so far we're 
the game tomorrow as well, but just looking to improve every day. And based on how the team played last year, you mentioned there's obviously changes this year, so it might be different. But what would you say the playing style of the team is? Is it a speed and skills type of team? Is it a more physical team or, or whatnot? Um, I think we're, um, yeah, because of the changes, uh, the, the players that have been um, changed since last year, obviously there's a different dynamic in our group this year. But I would say we have um, a little bit of a younger squad, maybe more um hopefully creative offensively. I think our coaches are going to want us to use our defensemen much more in the offense as well as, um, yeah, have an extremely hard-working team like we usually have. So uh, I don't expect to be a, a huge difference in our style, but, uh, yeah, you can expect the, the same um, level of uh, competitiveness that uh, we have every year and then, you know, um, can you tell us a little bit about the club itself, the sort of area it's at, the building you play out of, and what the fans are like as well? Yeah. Um, well, the city itself in Lulu is located about 100 kilometres from the Arctic Circle in the north of Sweden. Um, I think there's around 80,000 people in the city and the surrounding area. So it's not a, a small area by any means, but it's, it's a great size to have... Uh, a team here in the SHL in the top league in Sweden and we've got a lot of a lot of support um, the community is very very um, focused on the hockey here so it's a big part of the the makeup of the area and um, yeah we've got a, a great uh, group of fans and um, the arena that we play in is is uh, usually quite busy every night and uh, kind of a focus of the community. Now, Sweden's considered one of the top producers of talent in the world, and one of that is as part of their great junior development, etc. Do you and the other players get involved in that from time to time with coaching? Yeah, uh, well, they, they, we do have quite a few junior guys that will practice with us throughout the year, but they have an incredible system in Sweden. I can compare it to Canada. I think that in Sweden it's more cohesive through the, the junior ranks, um, even from the young young uh, players that are just starting um, they have a kind of a, uh, a flow with their, their coaching and the, the, the strategy that they, they teach kids and they're it's very well rounded and balanced and um, fluid between different age groups so it's um, it's obviously shown to be really successful we've got a lot of top talent produced in Sweden as you said so I think that's uh, can be attributed to the strong program that they have as a, a full organization and your Champions Hockey League campaign gets underway in about 10 to 14 days' time. Have you been given an idea as of yet from the coach uh, what you should expect from the three opposition teams? Um, yeah, not so much, but we have played uh, We have played some of the teams in the past. Last year we played Hamburg in the uh, precursor of the Champions League against the European Trophy. So um, we've seen them as well as uh, other Finnish teams and Luka Realm is another team in our group. Obviously, I haven't played Nottingham and aren't uh, too familiar with the style uh, there, but uh, I know that they have a number of North American guys, and um, I've had friends that have played in the league as well and, and have described how competitive it is. So we're, we're uh, yeah, focusing on ourselves right now, but obviously aware of the, the, the level of competition that we're going to face. Now, you've just mentioned there the European Trophy, which you said the predecessor to this new CHL. What kind of opportunity and experience does playing in competitions like this offer? Can it be a good draw for the club when they recruit new new players, particularly at any imports? I would think so. Um, I know from from previous years and in playing in international tournaments at the start of the year, we've had a, a good opportunity to look at um, what other teams and what other leagues offer in terms of the, their style and some individual players. In fact, we've have one player on our team that was faced last year in the European Trophy and uh, young defenseman. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely a situation where, where general managers and scouts will be be looking at uh, players from other teams and they might not have another opportunity to, to recruit them or to, to you know, take a look at how they play. So I think it's a good opportunity for, for players in, in different leagues to, to be recognized. Um, what kind of career highlight do you rate actually win in the European Trophy a couple of seasons back? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was definitely one of my highlights of my career to, to be able to uh, captain at the time, be able to win the uh, 
that tournament was huge after uh, yeah, 32 teams, I believe it was, or 24, 32 teams started the, the season uh, in the European Trophy. And to, to be able to say that we were the best that year was yeah, quite a, an honor. You mentioned earlier that you were made captain of the team a couple of years back. Can you tell us a bit about what it was like when you were told you'd be captain and what that means to you? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a huge honour for me and something I take very seriously. I, I know that uh, I was the first non non uh, North Boston, they say non Louisville area born player uh, to be captain of the team in the 30 plus years it's been in the league. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a big honour and something that I, I um, yeah, accepted happily and uh, done my best to try and represent the the city and the in the, the team um, in Sweden here the way that they would like to be represented. And just before I, I let you go, uh, just a few quick fire questions just to finish off. Your favorite movie? Favorite movie, uh, Deliverance. And your ideal pretty much meal? Oh, I'm a steak guy. I love steak. Uh, Alex Ovechkin or Sidney Crosby, and why? Sidney, Sidney Crosby. I just think he's a complete player. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you very much again for your time. Best of luck to yourself in the season and the upcoming Champions Hockey League. Okay. Thanks very much. Appreciate the time. My thanks again to both Chris and his club, Lulea, for arranging the interview. Hopefully we've managed to shed some light for you on the first two opponents the Panthers will face during the next week. We'll be sure to preview the final opposition, Hamburg Freezers, next month before the two sides clash. That's about all we've got time for in this edition. We've pushed back our EIHL referee interview a week, so you still have time to send in your questions about the new EIHL rules, or if you want to clarify any existing ones, just drop an email to comments at centreiceuk.com. You can also send any of your feedback, suggestions or contributions to the same address. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, username at UK, and on facebook.com forward slash UK. Hope you've enjoyed this special CHL edition of the podcast, and I'll catch you all again next week.